Hi, and welcome to this project which makes use of Sonic Pi version 3 together with TouchOSC running on an iPad as a means of supplying input to Sonic Pi to control what's going on. <clears throat> this project arises out of an earlier one I did which used a PS3 wireless games controller to control Sonic Pi. And <clears throat> in the course of that I developed what I called a long note synth which was basically uh, a synth playing a note for about a thousand seconds and you could control the pitch and the cutoff of the, of the synth as it played. And this gave quite a nice effect. So I decided to utilize that and indeed to take the other items which were on that project and control them by means of Touch OSC, which gives a slightly more sophisticated interface and also allowed me, as you can see, to add a virtual keyboard as a third means of input rather than the push buttons which were used in the PS3. So let's explore the project before we actually run it. Um, <clears throat> the, it relies heavily or entirely on OSC messages to um, control Sonic Pi. And these are received, and you can see some of them which have been received in this section of the queues log in um, Sonic Pi 3 down the bottom here. And these ones are actually um, messages which come from the left-hand volume slider on the um, touch OSC and that sends out a message which is OSC NC VFade 1 and uh, that is picked up by uh, a live loop inside Sonic Pi. We can just scroll down and find it. Um, it's this one here and <coughs> you can see that that is looking for the message OSC NC VFade 1 to come in and when it arrives, it sets the um, variable vol left to equal to the value it picks up multiplied by 2. And you can see that here. So that when we receive 0 0.5 from VFade 1, it sets vol left to 1. You'll notice all the significant figures after that, lots of them. <coughs> what I also have in here is a little function called PDEC2, which just prints two decimal places, which is what you can see on here. So that 1.0 there came from here. Uh, this 1.1 uh, um, came from here because that 5 took that up to 1.01. The next one, 1.01 again, down to 1.03 from the 1.027 at the bottom here. <coughs> and so that's typical of what's going on in the program. If you go back to the top of the program again, you can see that we set up information telling um, Sonic Pi where the iPad is. It's on this IP address, and we're going to talk to it on port 9000, whereas it's going to send information back to Sonic Pi, which is going to come in, um, if we look at the I.O. Um, tab and preferences, it's going to come in to the uh, address of Sonic Pi here. Uh, it's actually got, it's running on two addresses at once, it's going to come in at port 4559. It's actually got um, up here, it's got Wi-Fi on as well as a wired connection. And it's actually going to come in on the wired connection here, which is the um, address, um, which is 128 there, I think, not 134. But it's coming in at port 4559, which is where that's going to send that. You can see the addresses there. Going to come in on port on 192.168.1128. Um, <clears throat> we'll get rid of that and slide this back across. And we're going to um, make heavy use of the set and get commands which are added to Sonic Pi 3. This, if you like, uh, could be thought of rather crudely as a sort of global variable. It's effectively a protected. Uh, space where you can store something um, and you can then get it back. It's stored in the event system and you can get it back by a subsequent call using get. And it's also possible then to rewrite it with a different value back to the event system. And by using this we can actually uh, keep anything in the live loop safe and non-interactive with other live loops apart from in ways that you actually want and intend to take place. Then we have a section which is going to send OSC messages to the um, back again. So we're going to take 
OSC messages back to Touch OSC and to initialize the position of the various sliders so that they are where the program thinks they are and vice versa uh, when we start to control things and we don't get any untoward effects. Then a whole series, as I say, of live loops controlling different aspects, really picking up all the controls coming from Touch OSC, because it's only when we get right to the bottom section down here that we have three playing sections which play the three sources of notes which we have in this system. First of all, you notice that the whole thing is preceded with an FX reverb command and there's um, a thread with a loop inside it which is going to allow us to alter the amount of reverberation using the pink slider at the top of the um, Touch OSC screen. Then we have our three input sections. The first one here deals with the continuous note um, and that's where the name NC came from, note continuous, when I was reading up a name for the program. And that is controlled by the large XY slider space on the right hand top of the Touch OSC screen, a sort of touchpad there. And you can see that it's setting up this note which is going to start off with a duration of 1000 seconds. And we go around a loop 10,000 times looking at the controls for the note pitch and also for the uh, transpose setting and also for whether we're muting it or not and also for the volume of its slider and also for the cutoff applied to the note. And these are all controlled by Touch OSC. At the bottom of it, we use uh, an undocumented command in Sonic Pi. Um, N is the control variable that we're assigning the um, synth thread to, and we actually just kill that thread with n.kill at the end when we want to turn it off. And we'll see more of that when I actually get the program running. The second section here, live loop left note, uh, is controlled by the left hand of the two XY areas, and that's going to simply change the pitch of the note playing, and it's also going to change its uh, release setting, um, which is governed by the X coordinate of that square. And we can also control its volume. And the last section is going to control the keyboard. Because we have one live loop, which is um, going to have a wild card, so it accepts any of the OSC messages from the keyboard, and this um, uh, exclamation mark I in there is just to make sure it doesn't also respond to an OSC message which has got the word kill in there. We only want it to respond to the one which has got K plus a number of the key which is pressed. And we then have to decode which number actually went in there. And that's done by this first little routine which uses another undocumented um, function in Sonic Pi called get event. Now all of this is described in greater detail in the article which accompanies this which you'll see details of at the bottom of this video in the uh, description section. So, enough talking. Let's go back to the top here and we'll start this running. When I press um, the Go button, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to send these OSC messages to um, reset the sliders on Touch OSC. You'll see that if you look at the right-hand section of the screen when I press this now. Three, two, one, go and you can see that they've now all initialized the sliders. So let's start off with the keyboard. And you can see that that is playing with the tri synth, which is governed by the left hand of the two sliders here. If I change that to profit, because the keyboard is selected by the left hand of the selectors, it will now play profit. If I switch it to the right hand one, it still plays tri, or I could switch it to play FM on the right hand selector or profit on the left hand one. So it gives a great versatility there. We can adjust the release time of the note, make it much longer like that, or much shorter like that. We can adjust its reverb. And we put both of those on, it'll go on for quite a long time. Okay. So that gives you some of the ideas what you could control the keyboard. The other thing is that if we play a chord there, we can actually slide the whole keyboard down an octave, up an octave, or up another octave. So we've got four octave ranges of two octaves each um, for the keyboard. 
There's also a transpose setting which will affect it, but I'll show that in operation a bit later, later on when we look at the long note synth. The second of the inputs is the XY on the left here, has its own volume control, and it's controlled by the left-hand synth selector. It's on saw at the moment, so if I tap there, I get quite a short note because the Y direction, which we're changing now, governs the pitch of the note. But if we go along the bottom, the X direction adjusts the duration of the note. So we can get very short notes up here and longer notes. Longer notes up there or anything in between. different things, even with a mod saw. Left hand side, not even time for one modulation before it stops. Plenty on the right hand side. So that's the second of the two inputs. The third one, which is controlled by the right hand synth, um, is the long note. And we have several buttons to control this. At the moment I'll leave the volume at zero. These two buttons here will start the note or kill it. And we can see that on the screen shown uh, long note started and um, it doesn't actually come up with a message, I think, for the kill, but it does actually do it. It just changes the colour of the lead here so you know it's actually happened. Um, it says it started with synth TB303. If we slide that up, you can hear the long note running. Now, rather than stop it, we can temporarily mute it as well and unmute it again. So we can switch it on and off the same note though. And we can now also control it over an octave range in pitch and in cutoff, going left right. Of course, the volume settings. And we can adjust the reverb, which affects the character of the note as well. We can also adjust the transpose. Transpose setting actually affects everything as well. So if I play a chord with the keyboard, well, let's put it on a more sensible. Um, let's put that down the bottom, then they'll be in tune together. Go down an octave. Of course, we could keep the keyboard where it was by going up an octave there and just move this. some quite nice harmonies you can produce with it. And of course, if we want to change the synth, uh, well, first of all, uh, we can leave the keyboard on the right-hand synth selector, because once the long note started, it doesn't affect, it isn't affected by changing that selection, unless, of course, we were to kill the note and restart it, in which case it would pick up the new one. We've now got saw on here instead of TB303. And we can see that most uh, obviously if we change it to mod saw. Is that back to left synth? So, of course, you can have all three of these going together. Let's change the long note to something a bit more sensible. We'll stick it on that note there and we'll move this over on to say profit and we'll put that on try. So we've got oh, sorry on there. And try. And we've got this in profit.
So you can produce all of these three together going at the same time as you can see and that gives you the end of this demonstration which I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you'll look up the article and perhaps even try it out for yourself. Thanks for watching.